You feel that now? I feel like Rocky in this one, baby. Let's go. Alright, check it. Uh. Blast from the past, back from the future. So if I put the trigger in the past, it's on you and your future. I'm still hustling, still hugging the block. The referee to the shit. Welcome to the show. Is the greatest podcaster to ever live and grace this earth. It's your host, Rick H. I'm here with another episode of The Rick H Show, episode number 204. And today I have a special guest, the newest member of the team. Uh, she's been doing this for a minute. You've probably seen on This Is 50 a ton of times. You've seen on Instagram. Uh, we got a little nickname for her in the studio already, but we're not going to tell you that's an insider thing. Jacina Love is here, ladies and gentlemen. Jacina Love. Yay! I'm so excited. First, first and foremost, thank you. You're welcome. Because I'm usually the one doing the interviews. So to be sitting in this seat right now, being so, interviewed, this is big for me. Are you going to kind of like sense, because you've been in my seat a ton of times. Are you going to kind of like, oh, I know where he's going to go with the next I'm going to be real with you. I really hope I don't, because then you got to work on your... <clears throat> oh, shit. Damn. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yo, since I'm she got kidding. to the studio, she's been shitting on me all day long. So never, never. We do this. You I mean, and this Cabo is... cannot be in the same room ever again while I'm in there. Don't... I need I need like a little backup. Maybe like chicks needs to be in the room with us or millennials, somebody. Somebody. They, well, they love not, me. They're not gonna have my back neither. So no. I don't I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> but let, let's introduce you to the audience. Who's just seen a love? How'd you get into this business? Because you've been in it for a while. So let, let's give you your flowers. Let's introduce yourself properly. Uh, from Brooklyn, right? Yes. So Brooklyn Zone, just seen a love. I've been in the game, I would say, since 2008. Wow. And That's... that was starting off with DTF Radio. Shouts to my family at DTF oh, Radio so and what it was DTF. all about then and what it still is now. Yeah. Um, it's been a beautiful journey, I would say. The reason I got into it was mm -hmm. because my uncle was one of the masterminds behind... Um, shout out to Abner, AR. He's one of um, the ones that actually was in the crib starting off with the internet radio stuff. Okay. That's what podcasting is, internet yes. radio, basically. Yeah. So, um, started off with that. He was like, as a little girl, you always sang. You always, mm -hmm. you know, was putting on shows for your stuffed animals, Wait, for the family. You're going to sing too? Your cover, we, we got... I, can we sign the music career too? I don't know. I uh, think maybe a one hit. I could get a one hit out there. Anyway, that's I, then this, that's a topic. For I, I'm gonna time. bring that back at the end of this episode. Okay. But go ahead. <laughs> so he was just like, just get behind the mic. Mm. Let's see what you got. Then they gave me a Justina Love top ten countdown. I sidebar. I love music. Okay. Shout out to my father who raised me. I lost my mom at a young age. Dad raised me, and we were like brother and sister. Think mm. about it. He was 18 when he had me. Right? Late 80s. I get it. Middle of the 80s. Yo. Similar and, story. Raised by my mom. 15 oh years older. God. Late 80s. Very similar. Go ahead. I mean, we know the era of music, right? We've mm. seen it. We've seen how it's morphed into what it is now. And I love all, all forms of music, even what it is now. Even the boom bap we're listening to now, right? Mm -hmm. But I was there. I was there with my father at the beach concerts. I was there, you know, like that mm. was my upbringing. So to do a top 10 countdown was a no-brainer for me. Okay. And DTF was all hip-hop. So being little Latina that I am, shout out to my Boricuas out there, but shout out to my Latinos. Mm -hmm. I, um, I had my Manic Mondays. I had Wacky Wednesdays. So every day, and I would say this, I was doing the labeling of the days before we did the hashtags. Okay. Before we were doing... Before there was a Taco Tuesday. That... Yes, before... No, there's always been a Taco Tuesday. Come on, Rick. You're going to just blow... <laughs> we didn't make... First of all, hold on a second. There's always been Latinos a Taco Latinos didn't make that shit up. We eat tacos every day, no matter what fucking day it is. It don't matter what day it is. It was a marketing thing that these white people wanted. All right, cool. Taco. We eat tacos on Tuesdays then. Fuck I mean, it. you know, like... Puppy day and sibling day. Puppy day. And oh, no. Nah, we got all them. sorts of days now. It used to be secretary day. Now it's administrative assistant day. It's everything Hot day. dog day. <laughs> donut day. So this is what I'm I saying. I know all the food joints. You asked me all the food. <laughs> <laughs> so before yeah. 
that even was a thing. Mm. I was labeling the days and going with that and sticking to that. And people were listening to DTF radio for like, on Wednesdays I was playing, oh my God, with one of the songs that, well, to start, I said the lat- shout out to my Latinos because I was playing Spanish. Please don't tell me you played uh, Elvis Crespo Suavemente. I didn't, but that would have been a good one. You telling me that when it plays at a party, you don't dance? I just, at this point in time, I feel like throwing up in my mouth. That and Gasolina have like been just put to the basement for me. Out. I need like six years not hearing any of them records. And then when I hear it at a party, oh, this used to be my joint. I just, it's just, that's what like DJs go to. But did you carve into interviews while you were doing the top so 10? I did. Or how'd you get I into did. that? that First, well? it was all top 10 stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And then when I got really good with the mic and I was on everybody else's show mm. and we're doing a little bit of what we're doing right now, you know, mm. like that. Um, I got into interviewing. And for me, again, music is my heart. So to get behind the music, mm. don't want to sound cheesy, but to get behind it, to get behind what creates it, to get behind those creative minds. And I feel like everybody on a different level because, you know, we all say, right, because in this room right now, mm. there's a few of us that do interviews. Mm. But I feel like if I sit here, talk, we're talking about Elvis Crepo. If you mm. sit with Elvis Crepo today, it's not going to be the same interview I'm going to have when I sit with Elvis Crepo. It's just, just the way you don't have the same conversation with just anybody. I just feel like we they, we all serve a purpose. You're 100% correct. I feel yeah. like the gift of interviewing and sitting with people mm. and just getting to know them and hearing stories and connecting with them because yeah. I feel like we connect through the music right and the interviews too because of the stories exactly yeah. what made them create those songs mm. and these interviews is what takes us there so it's always been like I got a question that you just because you fed me something okay artist dead or alive who would you want to interview and what would be what song would you think you want to know like Oof. like if it's if it's big who shots ya who shot ya or any dead or alive, any artist, artist and song, and you will want to know what was the creative process behind it. Give Aaliyah. Aaliyah, which one? And for me, it was that crossover for her. For me, it was going, getting into Rock the Bow and recording mm. Queen of the Dam, and oh, the that, two worlds that, that she was, was living. <laughs> Queen of the Dam soundtrack. I mean, that was somebody, and I would say too, even like a Selena. Because that too was that her finally being able to mm-hmm. sing what she knew it was English mm-hmm. music, you know what I'm saying? But she did what she did for her culture. And she had to get accepted her, in her own culture yes. first. And then to have to die in that process. So I would love to have pause time when she was just dropped dreaming with you. To, what was mm-hmm. it? Dreaming? Dreaming of you, yeah. Dreaming yeah. of you. Yeah. And to see you how that felt and where she was at and the process behind that and to finally be able to give all she want been wanting to give since she was a little girl. So give me one that you've actually done that has been your favorite story so far. Oh my goodness. Oof. It's so crazy because I'm going to be real, Rick. I'm one that... Don't give me the generic answer that when people ask, what's your favorite episode of person you interviewed oh, I love them all they're all like I my love children them all. they're all my babies but you know in the well, back of your mind you're like you're yeah, that one time I did this episode it was fire cuz I, I like I got this nugget out of it cuz I could say I've sat with Cypress Hills yeah at the same time I sat with 50 cent yeah no but w- which one and Cypress Hills for me was a moment in time that mm. I was like living it for my father mm. so to me it was like I remember what it felt like I remember and then for 50 Cent, I would say the 50 Cent interview. Yeah. Which record did he surprise you? 50 is an incredibly Yo, smart I, man. His process. The thing with 50 is, the thing with the album, Get Rich or Die Trying, mm-hmm. I remember feeling so <laughs> gangster. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> like... I swore, I swore, like, you know, there was many men. He was from Southside Jamaica, Queens. Yeah. So 
to see where he's at now and to sit and to mm. ask him questions about that creative process, but to see where the process it, that it evolved has, into now. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. So they, but again, I will give that generic answer because they're all so special. No, nah, we can't. Moment with <laughs> that special shit we got now. Nah, I want no generic cut answers. That, cut cut that. That. <laughs> so let me ask you: <clears throat> you're part of media, and and you have. Just like me, you have a crazy love for radio. If I said, Jacina, you can only do one of the two, which one would be the one that you gravitate to? Radio. 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 Oof. There's nothing like the voice in New York. There's okay. nothing like being a voice. Mm -hmm. And I mean that on all levels. Um, sidebar to all I do here, which I don't feel like I should be mixing, and but I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. And that's... For me, it's the voice. I wake up to be a voice every day. Mm -hmm. I wake up to motivate. I wake up to teach. I wake up to... So being that, being able to just turn something on and knowing the voice without seeing the face, I feel like that's so powerful. And then sometimes, like I love radio because there's some amazing voices and cadence when people talk. And you got this picture in your head and then you see the photo of the person. You're like, this don't look like what it sounds like. So yeah. check it, the freedom behind that. Mm not being judged mm -hmm. that you could just go behind the mic and say whatever you want and look at what maybe you I should want be doing radio Melanie said <laughs> not the most attractive guy in the world maybe I should be doing radio my voice is pretty good but now <clears throat> the pull up is going to be a podcast mm -hmm. so you're going to kind of live both ends of the spectrum so talk to me about the pull up how that came about what can we expect of the show now that it's going to be produced here and everything. So, the pull-up. Mm. Now, I know shouts to those who have used the term. We all use a term. Mm -hmm. I am from the hood and we pull up. <laughs> I also feel like it's one of my dopest traits. In my family, I'm one that I show up. I pull up. Like, mm. you know, you're pulling up, I'm pulling up. So, to say... I have family who shouts to Lavish Lift, who owns Sprinter Company. And they were like, yo, Jay, you're doing interviews. Mm -hmm. What about we take this to the Sprinter and we, and I'm like, and we pull up. Mm -hmm. Like literally, we pull up to artists. Now, my thing behind pulling up to artists too is getting that feel, going to where they're from. And I'm not just trying to pull up in a sprint out. We taking this to, to different heights, if you get me. Okay. We're pulling up. So just the idea of going to where an artist is from and feeling that vibe. I mean, shouts to Commodore when I interviewed Commodore and we're in the middle of the of his hood in the park. And he's Spanish it's a Harlem, Harlem. Thing, baby. It's a Harlem thing, baby. <laughs> and he's talking about reminiscing on hearing his mother scream for him. At certain times of the day and just that nostalgia and what that brought back for me growing up and that. So just those moments, I feel like those are pieces of interviews mm. we don't always get in a sit down like this. Mm. Sorry, Rick. Um, we <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Joined the network a month ago taking crazy shots. First I'm millennial, kidding, now I'm you. Kidding. You guys have to see him off camera though, right? You have to see him off camera. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yes, that's what it's about for me. And what better way to get to, like, we want to know the stories. Mm -hmm. We want, what better stories are you going to get when you're in their, their like, environment? You're in yeah. their environment. You're yeah. on their This you're is my living vibe. room. <laughs> yes. So, you're in my environment right now. It's my living room. Me and Kaba live here. We're roommates. Wow. Yeah. You pushed it. This is, this is we're roommates. <laughs> roommates or roommates? Roommates. That's roommates. a cute term, though. Is it not? Roommates? Roommates? Well, you never heard of that? Yeah. Well, that, does that mean we're in the same room? Yeah, that's nah. so cute. We might be brothers. I don't even I don't know. know. I went you off on tangents there. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's a perfect... When you pulled up on Ken, right? You pulled up on his hood, and he hit the whole thing with my favorite when he does live with my pops. It's my oh, favorite thing. Gosh. And every time he does it, he always does it with a spin or a twist. That, and he did that. In the, in the episode with Ken. 
And I know that you loved it because immediately when you're in the Sprinter van, you you, you uh, went to it. So I'm guessing that's the type of environment you want to create when you pull up on people. Yes. You want to get, because he gave the story of it, living in, living with my pops too. And again, for me, my name is Justina Love and it's on my birth certificate. It's not like an Instagram wait, 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 wait. thing. For real? Yeah, my real name is Justina Love. Okay. My mom was a graffiti artist too back in the days. Well, clearly. Um, Love. And she used to tag up D Love, D Love. So around that same time, she had me and she named me Justina Love. So Damn. So we gonna put that street. birth certificate on IG. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's on all my IDs. Yeah. <laughs> I've posted it before. I've actually put my um, password. You're gonna repost that shit. <laughs> so what are your expectations now? I mean, it's gonna be, you know, we can expect maybe an episode a week, every week, right? For this run that you we're about to go on. You pressing me right now? Wait, yeah. What, what, are you, what are your... I would love to I would love to know. I want you to put it out there in the universe. What are your expectations at this point when, you know, it's about to go into pre-production and production? Well, we're going to be pulling up. Mm-hmm. We're going to take over NYC. Okay. And I mean, I don't mean just Every borough, artists, even Staten Island? Even Staten Island. Hello. Oh Yonkers? Don't, don't disrespect Staten Island. I just... Especially you. for hip-hop. What? It's Wu forever, baby. It's Wu Tang, yeah. <laughs> but then give me somebody else from Staten Island. Why are you gonna do that? <laughs> Yo, there don't come others. at me. Right there now. is others though. But why are you gonna do that? Most of the Jersey Shore people. That's it. And Pete Davidson. That's it. That's what they got. That's okay. I'm sorry. I just I feel bad sometimes, Staten Island. We sorry. It's all right. It's all right. So uh, once we do the pull-up show, the VMAs just passed. And I was watching it this year, and I was like, Jacina's going to be red carpet interviews maybe next year. That's definitely that's, the expectations. Yep. That's my expectations for you. I feel like I've been a little sleep on, but I do feel it's been... I've had my hands on a lot. Mm-hmm. I also do a lot of charity work. I'm, I'm excited about that. I profit organization. Yep. Um, I do prom work where we give, we give away free dresses, makeup, hair for women, for girls, for young women. I mean, that's going to... God bless you. Bendición, mijo. <laughs> que Dios te dé más vida. That's how true it is. Salud y amor. That's how true it is what I'm saying. Te quiero mucho. So um, <laughs> this year, we're also going to expand that to the mm-hmm. young gentlemen. I mean, we, I'm a mix... Of it all. So I feel like it took time. It took time. I'm not as, you know, when they say you got to take one thing and focus on it. Yeah. I guess they were right. Oh. One thing and focus on it. And then you could work on everything else. So I've taken 10 things and Mm -hmm. I focused on all of them. So now, you know, now I fell into the right hands. But timing is key too. I'm a very faithful person and timing is key. This all happened organically, by the way. It really did. Um, and when you mentioned the nonprofit, like that's my background, that's where I come from, and I was like, "Oh, what? okay, I love we could it. do some I can't some wait. other events too." I can't wait. Yeah, I did. I think six, seven years in the nonprofit sector. I've done a ton of events. You know, I've closed down streets in New York City to do play streets with PAL. You know, we've done hunger runs, midnight hunger runs. Oh where my God, I cannot wait, Rick. I'm we gonna all be there got for all together. We legit went through New York City giving uh, PB and J sandwiches, hot soup, hot chocolate, water to the homeless. Um, done a lot, and then you mentioned it. And it just took me all the way to when I was doing. No, that. for me, that's yeah. that type of groundwork though is what <clears throat> I am truly building a platform for. Mm-hmm. As I said before, I was somebody that lost my mother at a young age, and the community raised me. My father, it was my father, my grandparents. Yeah, I have a huge family who's really known in the hood too, but mm-hmm. it was the community that raised me. It was the salsa classes. It was the mm-hmm. baton twirlers. It was Henry She Settlement. Baton school. twirler? It was, oh, Henry She Settlement. Yes. That's I an went, LES. Yes, I, I'm telling you. So okay. I did a lot, and it was those programs. It was those things that mm-hmm. kept me out the streets and kept me inspired, motivated. So just seeing And even love, here today. School of Media for aspiring children in the neighborhood that want to be I just oh just hit me Oh my god that's my dream a too. foundation where you're going to have a building with different rooms where the kids will come they do their homework for an hour um they get some tutoring and then they learn 
and get experience in things like this. Because, like, if I was doing this when I was in high school, I would have really kept pushing. Because when I went into college, immediately, I got my classes, I went straight to the radio station. And I was like, yeah, I need to be a part of the radio station. But they didn't have this, like, during high school in those key years that you need. So true. So there it goes. Damn, I'm, I'm all about really the visions it. right now. I'm, I'm seeing it. Cut the check. I'm seeing it. There, no, 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 it's don't all good. It's worry. all good. I just, okay. I, 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 you know, it's all good. I'll hold you back. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, via amazing. We're talking about being Latino, right? Yeah. Uh, the first Latin artist to actually do their songs in Spanish, Bad Bunny, uh, J Bobbin. This was like three or four years ago. Bad Bunny, J Bobbin, Rosalia. Rosalina and uh, Ros- Rosalia. Yeah. Rosalia, Rosalia, sorry. And uh, Osuna. Okay. Fast forward to this past VMAs. We got two Latina women winning, Carol G and Shakira. Yes, killed it. And then we have I Spice winning in a category that has nothing to do with being Latino. And I really love seeing her win that too, like seeing her cry, and it just felt like a moment. I was a little disappointed with Nicki Minaj, though. Can we talk about the VMAs a little bit? Let's do that. Let's talk about it. I feel like Ice Spice resurrected Mick, Nicki Minaj's career from the grave. Well, and I didn't see from the grave because Cardi put an end to that shit. Mm. I'll take all the smoke anybody wants. So, give me a song. Seeing Green was the only song she dropped no, that no, was no, fire no, okay, in the wait, last. Wait, wait, wait. It's not about. It's for me. Okay. The narrative that you just gave, right? This is the narrative you just yeah. gave. For me, it was the lack of support, Nikki. For me, looking into the hip hop industry, mm-hmm. being a piece of it, it was the lack of support Nikki was giving majority of female artists, especially when Cardi dropped and dropping such a groundbreaking album. Mm hmm. And Nikki not playing into that, not that she's shut, because come on, guys, we cannot. Nikki's a legend. <laughs> we cannot. She's part of probably one of the greatest labels of all time. Nikki Her, played Drake and Little Wayne, but a very beautiful piece of hip hop. She did, and I give her her flowers. But there came a point where it fell Why? off. Why? Because how could a Soup, like how could a megastar fall off like that? Now we're talking. What's that Migos cannot- song that they was both on that they recorded separately? Mm-hmm. That was where it began. Of- that's I think that was the end of the beginning of the end for her. But again, why? Because of the lack of support. Because of that. So everybody's watching now. Like, even a woman like me watching, and I'm Nikki. Like, why are you doing that? Can I can I tell you, Nikki? You don't have raps? to do that. You don't have to be so extra. You don't because then she started again. Extra then, you know now now my narrative is gonna come in. But I would say to be fair, it wasn't so much of it was how she handled that at the time. That right now, all her raps were right now. I sunned y'all. I created y'all. I'm the greatest of all time. And and, and she kept the, and that was it. And then Cardi okay, came out. Okay, majority of men. That's what men rap hits, about. Hits, I sun hits, y'all. Hits, I fuck it. your girl. I ooh, ooh, I, could curse, I could curse. Yeah, you could curse. So no. No. Mm. No. Even I just feel like the arrogance rubbed people the wrong way. Okay, now and we get now, her out. now we're getting I get that. Okay. But her career was she was not she could she dropped like four or five albums. They didn't do nothing. Then she does a record with Ice Spice, who's on the come up, and everybody's like, Oh, that now back to that record with Nikki is fire. Now back to what then I was saying. The Barbie song, which is Ice's song, Nikki jumps on it, and now it's promoted as it Nikki's record. And then in the VMAs, instead of performing a record that brought you back, you perform some trash record. Sorry. <laughs> and you didn't show the girl sorry, no love. The whole show showed her no love. No love. Not, not one mention like, yo, shout out to Ice. Because Ice Spice loves Nicki Minaj. She grew up on her. Mm-hmm. She idolized her. Mm-hmm. I know yes. that for the fact that her working with her right now, she's like, yo, I, I didn't picture this. Yeah. And Nicki's nasty as a rapper. I give her flowers all the time. But I think that where she is now, Ice made her relevant again and made people want to hear again. 
But she went back to the arrogant shit immediately with this performance. So now back to what I was saying, she took this opportunity not mm-hmm. to be, not to do what she did when Cardi came out. Mm-hmm. To me, this is how it looks. So I'm going to, y'all, y'all saying I don't, I don't fuck with women? Yep. What? Ice Spice, right under my wing. Perfect timing. Let's change this narrative. Let's flip this. But, but she, she didn't change she, it. But she is who she is. She didn't change it with but that performance. She is who she is. I don't know. And it takes us back to why that died out then. I don't feel like it was the music. I feel like it was a time where she, we expected her looking in, we expected her to embrace. She need new Cardi. management. I mean, to, you know, like to bring freaking women and rap to a. She need new management. Somebody got to be in the studio like, yo, all right, that's cool. I think this is like her, though. I think she's just who. Anyways, great moment for Ice. I, I agree with you. So my question to it's you great. was, how do you feel right now seeing that? It's kind of like Latinos are getting the shine. Mm-hmm. Finally. So I wouldn't say finally, but I would say we're at a moment where they're finally seeing our numbers. Mm-hmm. Right? Where a they're billion. like... First time in the history of billion we've been, grossed. We've been doing numbers like that. There's no... Y'all Internationally, talk, but not in the US. Yeah. Inter- yeah. But this is what I'm saying. That Latin America, mm-hmm. you can't... You throw a YouTube on one of our artists and it's, the numbers are different from what we're doing over here. Carol G. It's just different. Millions and they've and always been. You. So to see, the, to see the light we're in, to see the... For me, it's... This word again comes up, crossover. Mm-hmm. For me, it's... Bad Bunny being on a track with Travis mm-hmm. and Bad Bunny singing Spanish mm-hmm. and Travis is rapping in English. Same thing he did with Drake That's years ago. That's what yeah. it... You know what? Yeah. <laughs> this guy is disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I feel like it's different now. Or Romeo and hit. Usher. Oh, Mia God, didn't hit? Well, yes, it did. It did, it did, it did, it did, it did. Oh! But, but wait, but wait, but wait, but wait, but wait. But look at this... But look at how that sound. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it more like hitting? I don't know. I just feel like this was like trap trap. I don't know. I know. I know he's probably going to go back to it, the trap sound. Um, and I think R&B is going to make a major comeback. Oh, my God. Well, super big comeback. You haven't heard the Love album? I did. But I, it, before that, like SZA is on fire right yes. now. Yes. Yes. Smoking but everybody. But we need somebody to carry the genre. We got to have somebody carry the genre. Because SZA have been out. Come on. We've had we have the record? Scissors. We have the Snow Allegras. We ha- There's a few women that have been killing it. Her. Oh, I love her Janae too. Janae Aiko. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. want me to go down my R&B list? Yeah, but it wasn't, but, the attention wasn't, like, it's there now. People want something different. So that's and I'm that's saying. the sound that is R&B. I feel like we need somebody just, like, to carry it. So maybe mm. Diddy's going to come through. You never know. Eh. The new bad boy. No. R&B bad boy. Yeah, I love Diddy, but <laughs> it needs to be somebody else. So um, I forgot where I was going to go because you, you threw Diddy in my head. <laughs> Whoa. All I picture is him Where's dancing now with his son. Skipping, skipping. <laughs> on a VMA stage. <laughs> Yo, that was a moment for me, though. Because for me, it I was, was expecting like, Mace. Okay, but that's why it was such a moment. Because it was like, I know. It's cool. He brought his kids out. Looked, his I, twins were there no, dancing. But he did the identical thing Mace would do from the foot in the camera. to You wasn't, you wasn't there. Those moments where the fisheye, the fisheye lens, Mm -hmm. like that was the video reenacted. Like I was like, what? So the fact that he lived that with his son, like I don't know. That's great for him, but I need Mace. That was I need murder there. I'm sorry. Mace don't want to be there. He don't want to be there. So if that makes you feel better. But I want Mace there. So do you love the VMAs though this year? They were cute. I like them. They were nice. They were cute. Okay. But the VMAs always does it for me. MTV always does it for me. What about the Grammys? Like, I feel like, um, oh. <laughs> like oh. Bad Bunny not getting album of the year. And hold they're on, giving hold it on. to- We're uh, going to go with the Grammys right now real quick because I, I got something to say about the Grammys. <laughs> but um, to s- put together with the pull-up, mm-hmm. um, damn, I lost my thought. 
No, go ahead. Damn. So you, you, the VMAs always does it for you. Okay, so MTV. Because, yeah. I grew up on MTV, and the pull up. I want it to be that. I mm-hmm. want vlog. I want. I want when we were watching Aston Kutcher doing punk. I want. I want to mix wait, up wait, all wait, wait, wait. these shows. Not him though. In one. <laughs> Why? Your boy getting canceled out here. Oh yeah. So you MTV, you want to bring that MTV feel back yes, with I the pull-up? I love that. I just just the vlogging way of being reality mm-hmm. meets real world. Like that's the kind of stuff. Yeah. Favorite. So, okay, so back to the Grammys. Yeah. I don't I don't forget. I don't need no what's the, Wait, what's the kid's name though? <laughs> uh, Boyka, Boyka, you hear what I said? What's this kid's name? Damn. He won instead of Bad Bunny. He won Album of the Year. I don't care I about was who super wins. Harry Styles. Listen, I don't care about who wins. For me, because we get it. We know what it's about. We get it. That's like, you got nominated. For me, as you got nominated, we in the building. Okay, they acknowledged us. We know where those numbers go. Mm-hmm. We know where the votes go. We we get it. They give you the but don't, best hip-hop collab award. But don't have Bad Bunny open. And you're trying to see more. Oh, he smashed oh, it. He's trying to see more diverse. Mm-hmm. He and smashed it, though. No subtitles. No subtitles. To me, that was such a. Like, that was such a. No subtitles? That's so important. Yeah, the Grammys? Nah. I the think... money behind the Grammys? Hmm. I think they if they okay. wanted to do it the right way, they would have gave that man album of the year. If they wanted to do it the right way, they would have had subtitles. So and they would have gave people who were watching it. Now it was a Grammy the, years ago instead of two years ago. Oh. So. But we get it. They've been rapping. They know too. As, so as which one of these shows we got to put you in to change up this narrative? I need you to produce one of these uh, award shows. I think MTV fits you the best. I think we can make MTV the I next think, Grammys. No, they need to put me I think they the get Grammys. It. They really want to be diverse. Let's really I gave up on them old white folks shows. So this is what I'm saying. So that's even the Oscars. Say, oh, why didn't we need money, a. Though. That's what we need. We need a film thing for us, like a real film joint, not the Oscars. So, so are you only interviewing music artists in the pull up or? No, we're doing all types of artists. Okay. From actors, producers, directors, producers, actors, comedians, a little bit of everything, podcasters, everything. definitely comedians, producers of you podcasters, producer, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 sock designers, that, okay, only fans, imagine celebrities, with stands, the person behind stands. That's a good idea, yeah. Who else? And then we could be in socks, influencers. Like- Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. You already said it in socks, but I was going to take it to the next level with the (laughs) socks. But you got me. You got me. So, welcome to this group officially. I'm super excited. I'm so, oh my God, such a blessing. And again, I would say timing is key. The way it's all mapped out for me, the way one chapter closed for me, just two weeks before having a meeting here. Mm -hmm. I mean... Nothing's a mistake. A meeting where she also came at me, came at my neck, you and Kaba that day. No. I don't forget these things. Yo, you you were in a suit that day and then changed into a t-shirt. I had and to. And one in respect. Like, I, that was the first time I was meeting you. You think right? I should have like, stayed in the suit? stood in the suit. I was like, oh, what happened here? No, nah, I know. Every time I got to do something with that the scene, was, I'm wearing a suit. That shit was just an act. Yo, like, we're doing wow. a show in the beach. I'm coming in a three-piece suit just because <laughs> you asked for that shit. <laughs> you and Kaba in the same room, though. It's not good. I'm excited. It's not working Kaba for in the same room. I'm like, excited be... to see it, but it doesn't. I can't be in that same room. And I know what he wants to say right now. Yo, you're not going to be in that room. Yo, but thank you for blessing the pod. I can't wait. Uh, you bring a whole different vibe and energy. Um, and I think you mesh well with all of us. So it, it's just, I can't wait for all this stuff to start coming out. Um, yeah, and I appreciate you taking the time. 
No, I appreciate you, honestly. Follow her on the Instagram, on the you don't even let me X on the Twitter. Talking, Jesus. subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. No, nah, goodbye. Nah. Goodbye. No, no, no. That's it. We gotta do your Instagram. We gotta do your Twitter. You gotta do your your YouTube. We gotta do everything. Everything is Justina Love. We keep it real simple. Okay. I still need to see that on a birth certificate. Just. Just if saying. you don't believe me, Rick, they're not going to believe me. I'm going to repost These it. You people. say you reposted it. So, my bad. <laughs> Just fuck with you. <laughs> Till next time. See you next week. The greatest podcast of our life. Uh. Uh, you feel that now? I feel like Rocky in this one, baby. Let's go. I check it.